Learning magic can be so easy to do if we do it in the right way, but often we make it harder than it needs to be. What we need to understand before we do anything is what type of learner are we? Now, most people may be a visual learner and they learn by looking at things. Some people might be a better learner by looking at a book, reading things and coming to their own conclusion. Everyone's entirely different. It's up to you to decide how you learn. But what we're going to talk about in this video today is sort of tips and tricks on how to learn magic ways to approach it, things to consider. My name is Esquina52, you know what today's episode is about because it's in the title and you click here to go and watch this so you already know what's going on. But go grab your cards, make sure that you drop a like, you subscribe and as always, welcome back to Vasics. Like I said at the beginning, we are going to be talking about how to learn magic. The purpose of today's video, I'm using the Black Roses Hotel casino playing cards. These are designed and produced by Daniel Schneider. He's one of my favourite designers in there because of his design work is very minimal, but also very effective. He's done a lot of work on the Orbit cards and he has his own playing cards called the Black Rose. Learning magic, just like anything in life, takes a lot of practice, dedication and a good learning source. Take the guitar. There are lots to learn from the guitar, from scales, notes, chords, songs, phrases, playing the pause, there's loads of individual different things that you need to learn while playing the guitar. But ultimately, what you need to have first is the basics down in order for you to progress and going forward. Yet those things don't happen overnight. You don't just pick up a, a guitar and then you're instantly amazing. Likewise, the same could be applied to magic. If we learn everything in the correct order, in a way that develops us and nourishes us and makes us better magicians, well, then our outcome of our learnings is gonna be far greater and we're gonna not have to invest so much time into the finished product. If we take a well-renowned song like the White Stripes, Seven Nation Army, now we know it's composed of loads of different notes. We can look up those notes and we can see how they sound. If I was to just play that song without thinking about how the notes sound and the rhythm and the melody, the notes would just sound like this. Now that doesn't sound right. We've got the right notes, but it doesn't sound right in the grand scheme of things. So this is the importance of how we learn magic. And I'm using the guitar as an analogy here because if we play those notes knowing that the pause, the melody, uh, the percussion beat in there, we kind of get this instead. that that sounds a lot better. And the reason we can all agree that the second clip sounds a lot better is because the amount of practice and the method of learning that went into it. If we look at clip one in comparison to clip two, ultimately the entire difference is, is that I as a person have understood what it is that I wanted to learn, how I was gonna learn it, put that learning into practice and then became the end result. I will go into this later on in the series, but practice doesn't always make perfect. A slogan that uh, my friend is using for his new playing card, slow hand playing cards, which are on Kickstarter right now. Practice doesn't always make perfect because if you're practicing the wrong thing repeatedly over and over again, it doesn't necessarily mean that what you're doing is the best end result. But we'll come on to that later on in the series. In terms of this though, what I've done is I've had a look at the tab for the guitar, I've read the tab, I've listened to the song, I've understood that there are pauses that you essentially notes that you aren't playing because they're pauses. I've then played around with what fingers are gonna use what notes and then practiced it. On top of that, I've laid over when the drum beat would be and included the where there is like a kick bass drum and that gives an overall better sound. What I did in those two clips essentially is just researched and learned a lot better. I know, okay, so I know what you're thinking, Steve. It's all well and good for guitar, but how does that apply to magic? How does it apply to playing cards and me learning magic? The two are very synonymous. Both have books that you can buy online that will teach you tabs or it will teach you magic tricks. Both have YouTube tutorials where you can learn different songs or tricks and routines. And both have paid services like Fender Play or we've got Magic Stream. So here are my tips and tricks for when you're using those services to help you and find out what kind of learner you are. Books. Now, what I will suggest with books is that you get something that is easy to read, simple instructions, not too complicated, but at the same time, not sort of junky. The three that I would definitely suggest, the Royal Road to Card Magic, Expert at the Card Table, and Expert Card Techniques. I'll leave the link to these in the description box down below, but these are probably like the three 
books that all magicians use to get started into. You're going to learn a load from this. It's going to be a sort of overwhelming. So you, what you need to do is pick what you want to learn. Now the expert card technique, which I got here, that has uh, an index page at the front that breaks down everything into loads of different parts and routines and everything like that. And it builds up very slowly from the beginning to the end. At the start, you've got a, uh, a whole entire chapter on secret lifts. And then you've got false deals, the side slip, the pass, harming, and it goes through loads of different things for you to learn. As well as that, it has a bit at the front called nomenclature, which essentially is a glossary of loads of different magic terms. So you can understand what they're saying in the book. And that's quite key to your learning. If you don't understand words that are being used, look them up, people. Look them up. It's not hard. You've all got a bloody computer in your phone. You can look up Google, find out what it's called. But this has a load of terms at the beginning that they use throughout the entire book, like break, crimp, jog. These are all words that you can use to learn and by learning them you know what's going on and you know what things are doing and also when you hear certain words in different YouTube videos you're oh I know what that is. YouTube. We're on this platform, there are creators on this platform that teach loads of magic out there. You don't necessarily have to learn from one of the big magic accounts however there is that predisposition that you know that that person is paid to do their job, they have a mass following and the content they put out is typically quite good. So I would definitely say if you want to learn a couple of visual magic tricks and some sort of routines like that, definitely go have a look at like, you know, Daniel Madison, Alex Pandrea, even Chris Ramsey. Xavier Spade as well will teach you a lot of theory behind that, but you also have a load of littler accounts. Now, when I first got into magic, the big major account on YouTube was Miss Mag 822 and he taught a ton of magic tricks on there from self-working to sort of fun demonstration magic and to sort of like more principle based magic as well. As well as that, there's loads of creators on this platform that teach loads and loads of magic tricks, you just have to look it up. But the tips that I would give you to this, if it's someone, for example, that just makes YouTube content, they've never performed live, I would just be weary of what they're teaching. It has happened before on this platform where someone has been teaching someone else's stuff, you know, they're teaching something from a book that's in copyright print, there's loads of obviously different bits and bobs behind it, and as well as that, if you're learning something from someone that's from something else, it's their interpretation of it. Now, it can be a more beneficial thing, so if they're, they found a workaround to it, but what I would suggest is just be sort of overcritical of what you're watching and just think will this work in the environment I want to perform at so if you're performing at a wedding for example or if you're performing in the street is that trick tailored to you so if it's something where it uses the table and you only ever do street magic it's good to learn but at the same time is it something that's going to be practical for you so that's just something to bear in mind and of course the last one that we have out there is paid streaming platform or paid subscription services what I will say with these is that you definitely get your money's worth with them so if you look at magic stream I think it's like 99 pounds for the year or something like that and there's like 26,000 routines in there. You wouldn't learn them all in a year anyway. But what they do have is a vast array of things that you can sort of, like Netflix, just flick through, have a little watch. Yeah, that's something I'd like to do. Some could be quite short, but some could be up to like 30, 40 minutes. It's in-depth, detailed discussion about how it's done. These are obviously paid productions by a magic company, so you know that they're going to be good. It's just whether or not they're gonna be practical. By the way, this is Copernicus, as you've seen him in the film, uh, just brightening up the house and just putting, obviously, some greenery around there. But he keeps getting in the way, I keep slapping him and I feel bad. Sorry Copernicus. So anyway, with those paid subscription services, you know that they're being paid, uh, you know, a, a magic company is putting them out there for commercial use. So they must be good, they go through a vetting process. Unlike YouTube where someone just watches their own work and uploads it, you've got a vetting process. They watch it, they have to perform it, they have to teach it in front of people, they have a filming day of doing it. It's a lot more and they have to go and perform it in the real world to build a trailer for it so you know that that trick works you see its application in the real world rather than someone sat at a desk just showing you how to do a magic trick with that though they are quite costly so if you can i would say avoid those sort of things for now learn sort of your basic tricks going forward and we're going to teach some basic tricks coming up very soon as well i think in the next episode i think well i'll have a look on that i'd say get a deck of cards learn how to shuffle them learn what is sleight of hand and then think about what type of learner you are if you're a visual learner you're going to learn best via YouTube. But that doesn't say just because you're a visual learner, you only watch YouTube. What you need to do is have a mixture of both. So if you're a visual learner, watch YouTube, but read where this stuff comes from. So if it's from expert card technique, they're talking about palming, read what the palming is, or how to do palming in certain palming techniques. Then go watch a YouTube video on there, or watch someone performing palming magic. That way, you've got a bit of both, and it's just gonna develop yourself even more. And then you'll start to understand the books a lot better, 
And from that, you might just pick up a book that there is no video instruction to and learn it very well. So in summary, how are we going to learn magic? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what type of learner we are. So when you're at work or when you're at school, whatever you sort of do, how is it that you understand that you do something? Is it because you do it over and over again and you repeat that process? Is it because you read something? Is it because you watch something and you learn from that? Figure out what it is that makes you tick. Figure out what it is that makes you learn. Then what you're going to do is you're going to niche down that learning technique. So if it's YouTube, for example, and you learn visually, you're going to watch content. But what you're going to do is you're going to be critical of the content. You're going to watch it in depth. You're going to understand what's happening. Now, you need to understand the different terms there are while you're doing that trick and its application in the real world. So if you're going to be doing a sandwich trick, what is it that you're doing with that trick? What is the pattern that's involved? Are they teaching the pattern with that or are they just showing you look how you do a sandwich trick? Think about how you're going to apply that to your own technique in the real world. Then what you're going to do is you're going to practice that, but you're going to practice it correctly. So you need to understand what it is that, that works. Now, as we saw from the guitar clip at the beginning, I filmed it and I could see the differences between the two. So I suggest that you film yourself while you're, you learn these tricks, you perform them, and then film yourself a couple of days later. You'll notice if you play guitar or you play any sports or you do anything like that, even video games as well. The first day you play something or you do something, come back to it seven days later and just look at what you do and evaluate what you've done. Those are my tips on how to learn magic. If you've liked this video, make sure you give it a like. Ding, ding. You subscribe, you check out the other videos from this series, which we listed at the end of the video and probably in the description box down below. And share it and love it and enjoy it and just have a good time and thank you for watching. Oh, and uh, while I remember, when this video goes live, a couple of days afterwards, I will be going down to London, staying the night because I'm flying off to New York for the week. Uh, hopefully, I'll have two videos filmed so that there's one to come up while I am in New York and should time allow it, I'm there for a week. I should film a Back to Basics in New York. Any of you from New York, if you're watching this video and you're going to be in New York, I'm going to be there from the 9th of February to the 15th of February. So if you're about, you're a New York magician, hit me up on Instagram and we'll definitely, definitely try and get together and hang out and have a jam. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. Oi! Royal Coat. <laughs> oh!